we create our reality through something called law of cause and effect. And our thoughts, whether they are vocalized or silent, show up in our world as our experience. So all of reality is really just an outpicturing of our consciousness. Dr. Ernest Holmes tells us, for everything that happens in the objective world, there must be something in the subjective world which perfectly balances it. So whenever we hold something against someone, we're really creating blocks for our own good. And the technique of radical forgiveness, which is what I want to talk about this morning, isn't difficult if we understand how the universe works. If the great spirit can only work for us by working through us, then the only thing that is essential for forgiveness is our willingness. If we have the desire to forgive the offender, the greatest part of the work is already done. There is a divine plan unfolding throughout the universe at all times. And it is filled with opportunities to make choices and decisions. So when the mind condemns, it simply doesn't understand that the universe is on purpose. We never really know what brings a person to do what they do. Does this mean we foster wrongdoing? What about murder? The late Dr. Wayne Dyer, in his early work, wrote a book entitled Gifts from Icus. Have any of you read it? <clears throat> in Gifts from Icus, Dr. Wayne Dyer talks about Icus, who is a woman from another planet that comes to the Earth to visit him. And she's quite concerned about the collective consciousness of fear around death in our society. Because on her planet, everyone understands that life is eternal. And so if there is someone in their path that needs them to lay down their life, they have no problem doing that. This is a very foreign concept for most of us to understand. But it's only when we have complete clarity in our inner mind that the laws of the universe get in alignment and our dreams and our dires and desires can outpicture. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And the biggest life is the one that includes the most. When we understand the frailties of human nature, it becomes a lot easier to practice compassion. What appears to be cruel and nasty behavior might be exactly what the person needs who's experiencing it in order to move forward. Situations that challenge us may hold the key to revealing our wholeness. So the people that seem to be the most troublesome could therefore be our greatest teachers. Whenever there appears to be something that's happening that isn't in alignment with what we really believe, it's often mirroring back something that we need to work on, something that we need to bring into the light. For example, if a lack of trust is our issue, then there will be people in our experience who betray us. My first husband and my second husband were both really good at that. <laughs> and it took me a long time to understand that it wasn't about them, it was about me. We come into this world with a mission. And that mission is to fully experience a particular energy pattern. And our job is to transform that energy into love. 
So whatever we see in someone else is a direct reflection of ourselves, if we choose to react to it. The only way to clear that mirror image isn't with Windex. Remember my big fat Greek wedding when he used to spray everything in sight? It's through forgiveness. And the first type of forgiveness is traditional forgiveness, which is the willingness to forgive is present, but so is the residual need to condemn. So there's a price on the forgiveness. If you take out the garbage, I will love you. Victim consciousness is the belief that someone else has done something bad to you, and that as a result, they are responsible for your unhappiness. But since we create our experience through our own thinking, that's impossible. So traditional forgiveness is a way to exist in the material world. Radical forgiveness, on the other hand, is about living from the spiritual world, where we take responsibility for our own energy. And Colin Tipping, who is the author of Radical Forgiveness, says that with radical forgiveness, the willingness to forgive is present, but not the need to condemn. Therefore, the victim consciousness is dropped and everything changes. So this is about love without attachment. Isn't always easy to do. We are spiritual beings having a human experience, which means we still live in what I like to call the land of effect. And at times, we will fall short of living from that perfection. If, for example, we're in physical pain, or maybe we're grieving, maybe our relationship is broken, maybe we don't have a clue what it is we want to be when we grow up. But there is a divine plan that is unfolding through us. And it is important to experience the anger, the sadness, and the grief. These emotions give us the opportunity to really understand where we are in our spiritual growth. And it's only when we're ready to do this that we can transform our own consciousness. But I can promise you this. If God brings you to it, God will bring you through it. And I have a story I'd like to share from Tom Paschal. If God brings you to it, God will bring you through it. A young and successful executive was traveling down a neighborhood street, going a bit too fast in his new Jag. He was watching for kids darting out from between parked cars and slowed down when he thought he saw something. As his car passed, no children appeared, but instead a brick smashed into the Jag's side door. He slammed on the brakes and backed the Jag back to the spot where the brick had been thrown. The angry driver then jumped out of the car, grabbed the kid he saw standing by, and pushed him up against a parked car, shouting, What was that all about, and who are you? Just what the heck are you doing? This is a new car, and that brick you threw is going to cost you a lot of money. Why did you do it? The young boy was apologetic. Please, mister, please. I'm sorry, but I didn't know what else to do, he pleaded. I threw the brick because no one else would stop. With tears dripping down his face and off his chin, the youth pointed to a spot just around a parked car. It's my brother, he said. He rolled off the car curb and fell out of his wheelchair, and I can't lift him up. Now sobbing, the boy asked the stunned executive, would you please help me get him back into his wheelchair? He's hurt, and he's too heavy for me. Moved beyond words, the driver tried to swallow the rapidly swelling lump in his throat. He hurriedly lift the handicapped boy back to, into the wheelchair. Then he took out a linen handkerchief and dabbed the fresh scrapes and cuts. A quick look told him everything was going to be okay. Thank you, and may God bless you, the grateful child told the stranger. Too shook up for words, the man simply watched the boy push his wheelchair-bound brother down the sidewalk toward their home. It was a long, slow walk back to the Jaguar. 
the damage was very noticeable. But the driver never bothered to repair the dented side door. He kept the dent there to remind him of this message. Don't go through life so fast that someone has to throw a brick at you to get your attention. If God brings you to it, God will bring you through it. So each of us is walking a unique, sacred path. And it's only through the evolution of our own soul that we can accept and experience the past, taking only the higher truth, which is love, with us. If we carry our anger or our past mistakes with us, they block the mind-body-spirit connection. When we forgive, it removes those blockages and it makes it possible for our wholeness to be revealed. So the method of forgiving is this, to become quiet, to be relaxed, to repeat a prayer or a mantra, to center ourselves in conscious awareness of our connection to source. What's most important is that we have an open heart. Are you ready to do the work? You will find a form on your chair or on the floor beneath your chair or on the chair next to you. Okay, so I just invite you to become relaxed as Jane brings up some soft, quiet music and to really be centered in your heart space as we move through these together. I, and I'm going to use my name, Heidi Michelle Peck, give my higher self permission to release all unfounded beliefs. I ask all my angels and gods who want the best for me to assist in this releasing process. I invite you to enter in your name. And really sit with that for a moment. This first step is about recognizing the higher power that is you. The second step is about unifying with that idea of who you are as the higher power. I, Heidi Michelle Peck, thank my higher self for creating the experiences that have caused my own spiritual growth. I now accept these experiences without judgment and I release them into the ethers from whence they came. And the third step is about declaration or affirmation. I, Heidi Michelle Peck, do hereby forgive Helen Towell. I release her to her highest and best and I set her free.
I bless her for being willing to be my teacher. I sever all unhealthy attachments to this person and I send her unconditional love. And the fourth step is about thanksgiving. I, Heidi Michelle Peck, do hereby forgive and accept myself exactly as I am. I love myself the way I am. There's nothing I need to change. I am powerful, just like the lawnmower. And I am magnificent. The last step is about release. I, Heidi Michelle Peck, do hereby release myself to my highest good. And I declare joy, freedom, and fulfillment in all areas of my life. And when you're comfortable doing so, I ask you to turn your radical release paper over and on the back, you will find a sheet of flash paper. And I'd like you to write the name of the person you are releasing on that flash paper. As you come up to release the person into the light, there's a basket next to the candle where you can accept love by choosing any one of the stones. Carol's going to demonstrate how to appropriately, appropriately put the flash paper into the fire. <laughs> And I invite you to just come as you're called. Life on earth is always changing. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> As we approach 2018, it's a good time to look at the past, to really review what unexpected gifts came our way. Were we able to turn our challenges into blessings? I'm not really fond of the idea of resolutions. I would much rather call them re solutions, because that way we can adapt them to wherever we are in this moment. So regardless of what happened last year, it's important to move into this new year with joyful anticipation, to be true to ourselves, to reach out to our brothers and sisters, 
to really become a part of this spiritual family and to share the blessings and the gifts that we all give one another in love and light. Thank you and namaste.